It is 3.30. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. Sorry. Are you all set? Voice memo. Sorry about that. I don't have it. Yes, you do, Siri. Voice memo. I can never find the app, so i got to ask you where it's at. All right, here we go, guys. Okay, there right. it is. All right. All right. All right, so meeting called to order at 3.30 p.m. Hello, everyone. How was your week? Don't even ask. Don't even ask. Okay, so looking at the agenda here, we have a couple things to look over. We have both um, September 25th minutes yes. and September 9th minutes. Do you have both of those, Cosmo? No. Thank okay. you. Yes, sir. September 25th and September 9th. Here we are. And so are, you, are you taking your notes through there? Or? Um, I'm just going to write it down for right now. Okay. And so um, I'll give you a couple minutes to look through these because I know we, we were, we're playing catch up. We are. And so. I apologize for all that. Confusion. No, you're fine. So, but Sounds first, after before I do that, I'm going to do the roll call real quick. Okay, so Commissioner Galvin. Present. Commissioner Moore. Commissioner Smith. Present. Commissioner Reynolds. Present. Commissioner Pozos. Present. Commissioner Lane. Commissioner Lenore. Commissioner Patrick. Present. And I think that's everyone. Oh, um, I didn't hear anything from Commissioner Moore. So I don't know if he's coming in late. I didn't hear anything, so I don't know. Um, so that's that's that for the roll call. Our liaison is here, and we have a guest. Please note, speaker, our guest speaker, Mr. Sam Lebesnik, owner operator, McDonald's Laporte County. Right. Okay, so to the approval minutes, I'll I'll give you a few minutes to look at those because we we are playing catch up. So we'll look at those if you see anything. Oh, no. Okay, everyone still need a little bit of time? Uh, just a quick question. The yeah. last meeting, which date was that? That was the... I have it. Well, I can tell you those minutes are here today because they are not. Okay. Yes, they will be next meeting. Though. Okay. That's what I was wondering. I was like, mm -hmm. I know that there wasn't a quorum and you didn't actually have a meeting, but there still has to be a record of. Was that a ninth? Right. That was a ninth. Okay. So you guys are on top of it. Yeah. Yes, we still, are. Yep. So next meeting, we should be completely caught up. For sure. We will be. We'll be caught up with all of our minutes because, yeah, that was, that was right. That last meeting threw us off a little bit. Okay. So did everyone, was everyone okay with the minutes? You have anything you wanted to add, subtract? Okay, so can I get a motion to approve the minutes? Um, I motion to approve the minutes from September 25th and also um, uh, September 9th. Okay. I second that motion. All, right. um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And oppose. Oh, so unanimous. Um, the minutes have been approved, and so the next week we will be playing will be finally caught up from this meeting, or sorry, last, last meetings. meetings and this meetings, yes. and we'll be fully caught up with all of our minutes, okay? Most definitely. So, um, 
So old business uh, going through here, um, the nomination of the ninth commissioner member. Well, does anyone have anyone they'd like to nominate? No? If not, I have one. Okay. Her name is um, Elizabeth, or uh, no, not Elizabeth, Doporowski. Catherine. Catherine. Oh, you know Catherine? Yeah, yeah Catherine yeah. Doborowski. She was going to be here today. She works at Cap. She works at Captain Ed's. Um, <laughs> she's been helping me with my campaign. She's a very nice person. She's going to be here today, so she can state her case. But she will be coming uh, one of these meetings. But yeah, Great. Catherine Dop Doporowski. Great. I nominate her. Her family she, um, hmm? filled out the paperwork with the clerk. Yeah. She will be. Yeah. Um, but she's uh, her family is deeply rooted with the uh, sheriff's office, law enforcement. She has a long history of family rooted with law enforcement. She's very. Uh, very involved with that. Good family. Knowing her, she'd be a good pick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. She really wanted to be here today. She really did. She had to work. Um, so were there any other nominations? Do we have any prior nominations before then? Before now? I did feel like did, someone nominated did Mr. someone. Did Commissioner Moore have one? Or? No, he didn't. He didn't? No. Not that I recall. No. Yeah, okay. Okay. So we're still on for our nomination of our ninth commissioner member. Um, <coughs> Okay. Sounds good. So uh, that's this is still tabled then. Hmm. Um, did anyone want to add anything concerning this here? Okay. So moving on, the fundraiser planning. The fundraiser planning. We've had a lot of great ideas for that. Um, as we know, the. Uh, uh, what is it? Winter is coming, <laughs> and I know we want to try to do something before winter gets here. Um, any ideas on uh, building on what we already thrown out there, or adding anything? Well, I know I wasn't here last meeting. I'd love to hear the ideas that some of you came up with. Are there any new ideas on the table? I'm sure you I, have some. I mentioned the um, the silent disco party last time. Okay. That I thought it would bring in different age groups, so from the youth all the way to older, to like the older ages, and that it could be hosted at the. I don't know if I mentioned, but it probably could be hosted at the YMCA, and plus the two different gyms, it could separate the age groups, right. and then with the um, with the headphones, you have different genres of music, and then it could be everyone could be together in their own world dancing. I love that idea. Yeah, I I know this uh, Friday aren't they having a. Uh, a teen night there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're having a teen night at the Y. So, yeah. fortunately, I cannot. Okay. I would have loved to. I totally would have been there. But uh, but if that's going to be, you know, if we get a good crowd mm -hmm. there, chances are we'll even have right. a good crowd there, too. Yeah. So. so, take inventory <laughs> yeah. from that. So um, I have a question. I have yeah. a quick question. Yeah. Have you done any uh, research on the yeah. sign disco? Like pricing and stuff? Yeah, is there someone that like travels and does it? Or yeah, would you have to do it on yourself? Um, they have like a packaging, but I feel like the packaging is more expensive because you have like, you have to pay for the DJs and like the other workers, hotel and all the other stuff. But they give you the boxes of headphones and everything two days, two days, three days prior to the event so you can see if it works and if it doesn't, you send it back or something like that. But I know one pair is $6, and if we charge everyone 10 I think that, well, I think it makes profit. I don't know if anyone can correct me on that. But, um, and then, um, we can, they, like, give you all the instructions. I was, um, emailing someone back and forth about it, okay. but they set up any more questions than just to talk to them. But it's kind of self-explanatory when you get all this stuff. Yeah, so I was going to ask you that same question, actually. So, um, I have another question. If you can get us all that information... Mm -hmm. So we can all have it and, you know, look at it and different things like that. Because um, I do think it, it would be, like you said, you know, if, why would, you know, paying for people to come and sit all that and do that work when we're, like, when we're, we're young, we can do it. <laughs> I want to dance. Right. <laughs> did, did you guys pick a, a, a fundraising committee to kind of discuss the stuff? Before you got back to the meeting, or yes, we met the fundraising committee. Oh, that right. The committee hasn't met. You guys just independently did this. We don't have the committees shit. yet. We have the names of them. We, have, we, we didn't pick like right. Because yeah. oh, okay. we're okay. waiting on our ninth to the okay. Right, our ninth gotcha. member, and then to see what which is coming down the line here um, for the next topic right now. Um, right. 
corresponding with our other commissioners. I don't even yes. know where our other commissioners are. Okay. So before we get to that, was there anything else under fundraiser planning? Any other ideas? Um, hmm? Well, yeah, if you can make a note of that to get us that information, that'd be great. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll move on. So, um, corresponding with our other commissioners, we have, um, so we have, we had three that we were unable to uh, connect with, one moved away, so which opened up our ninth slot, which we are still nominating for our ninth commissioner, so that's no longer um, a problem with communicating with that person because there's no one there. Uh, but we have two. Commissioner Lane, uh, uh, Chris Lane, Christopher Lane, and Commissioner uh, uh, Lenore, um, which Commissioner Lane is at college, IU, and I'm not sure about Commissioner Lenore. Have you been able to contact either? I have not been able to contact Commissioner Lenore. I have him on Facebook. Okay. If you need me to text him. If we can reach out to them, that'd be great. But I've not been able to get a hold of Commissioner Lenore, so maybe you could get a different response. Um, Commissioner Lane, I know he's at school, like I said, um, which we need to get in contact with him, too, to see if if they'd be willing to. Because we did discuss um, having them Skyped in our meetings. Um, but then if it turns out to where they can't, Skype in, and they are away at college, then what's our next step? Well, yeah, you guys would have to make a determination on how you want to go with that, and we'd have to make sure we are within what the ordinance with they the created ordinance the, is, yeah. the commission is. And so, so um, does anyone does anyone have anyone that's on the ten? I should have it. Okay. And so, because well, we need to, we, we need to act uh, sort of swiftly so we can get our other committees built up and so that you know you know if we if you know if they're away in college okay that's okay because they're they're furthering their education great so we can have you skyped in or we can you know work something else but if they're away in college and they they say well i can't i can't then we have to we have, we gotta we have to keep moving right, right. so we had to keep moving so within the uh with in the ordinance here i think it'd be under Let's see here. I have something right here. What do you have? Under section, uh, section, section. Under section B, membership governing regulations of the commission. Okay. It says, to be eligible to serve as a member, the individual must live in Michigan City um, area at the end of their appointment, have demonstrated community involvement and leadership, and leadership qualities. The president of the common council shall appoint a council member as a non-voting liaison to the commission. Okay, so let's look more toward um, number five, the removal. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll say look toward rem removal first, work first. towards making contact. Right, first, yeah. What, so uh, I'm saying like make, what's our, what's our go-to after we make contact? After then you look at what, right. the, what the options right. are as far as uh, getting someone else on the commission. So if we can, then we'll just, for what we'll do is we'll look into that prior or after, after you make your contact, then we can see what, okay, what our next step will be so that we can move in a kind of a step-by-step -step order so that we can, you know, if we can get a hold of them, great, their part. If we can't, okay, what else can we do? Commissioner Smith, you said you can get in contact with which one? Travis Lenore. Travis, okay. And... I don't have Chris on any Chris, social media. I don't does, think so. Does anybody? I think I can. You Chris Lane. Anything. That's who it is. Right? Probably yeah. Snapchat. Yeah, Chris Lane. I know uh, some. I have his number. Okay. Can you so give me Chris Lane? Yeah. Okay. Um. So as far as corresponding with them after after our communications with them and they're like, yeah, I'd like to uh, Skype in, then 
we'd have to figure out, you know, would, do we want to you know, have it like on someone's computer at the end of a table or something yeah, like that. Right. And that's that's not, that's an easy fix. So that's nothing detailed. Um, <coughs> so that's about it with the Skyping and any other um, ideas about that or other forms of communicating with them? Is Would that be um, favorable? I like the Skype way. If that's what has to be done. Right. Right. So first we'll just, we'll just uh, first rely on the communicating with them first before we move on to anything else with this. Yeah, I would say between now and the next meeting, uh, yeah. since the two of you are going to attempt to contact them, uh, try to exhaust every every attempt in the next two weeks before you meet again to make the contact and see what their plans are and then move forward. Right. So this one will still be tabled for next meeting. So them being on Skype doesn't count as like a quorum or anything? The way uh, the attorney uh, explained it to me, it's up to you guys. So if you want to make that acceptable, then you can do that. Um, I want them on board. They're good. Chris Ruin's a good guy. He'd yeah. be great for this. So I think we can do Skype. Let's do it. So we'll just make our connections, and we will come back to this next meeting, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, Next meeting, it's going to be on a Monday, so it'd be Monday, November 4th is our next meeting at 3.30. So that's where we'll make those decisions there. So we're going to table it for now. So under news business, new business here, we have a guest speaker, Mr. Sam Lovaznik. Hi everybody, how's it going? Hello. So I know under here it has me as a guest speaker, but I, I'm hoping that through this we can have more of a conversation uh, than me going through here. So I want to start out by thanking you guys for including me in this when Nathan was telling me about the project. And granted, if uh, if a little bit of knowledge is dangerous, I'm nuclear. I know very, very little uh, about what you guys are doing so far. But I'm uh, very encouraged by the meeting of minds that we have here and very inspired by, you know, the youth of our community coming together to make a difference. I, I think, you know, in theory, it's fantastic. And I'm really looking forward to see what you guys put into practice. Um, with that said, as we start our conversation, I think I was invited as we were talking a little bit about a tuition assistance program right. we had. And I'm happy to talk about that today as well. Um, or... Or we can go through, I'd love to see if different ways I could assist you guys in your journey here. Uh, but I, I do want to stress the word assist because I think what makes it so special is that it's led by you. Uh, so uh, throughout your journey here, please, I'll, I'll give out business cards when we're done. But I'd like everybody, I want to open the door to be a resource to everybody. And uh, if I can ever be of help or if, if any one of my staff or my facilities can be of help. Uh, to the best of our ability, our doors will be open to you. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, I am, uh, as Nathan said, the owner-operator, uh, along with my father, um, for the McDonald's here in Michigan City, as well as things in Laporte and Westville. We have, uh, we're the local operators here in uh, Laporte County. I'm the third generation of my family uh, to be doing this. So our roots, we, we came to Michigan City in June of 1912. A little bit before that, we opened up the first store in June of 1961. Um, so I'd imagine we got here four or five months ahead of that um, uh, for the construction. Um, so I'm third generation here in Michigan City. Came up through Michigan City School Systems. This is home to me uh, as we go through there. And uh, McDonald's is a family business. And one of the things I love about it is we get to have so many different dynamics because McDonald's is a Fortune 500 company, and I'm also an entrepreneur. As we get to go through that, I get to be a small town businessman as part of one of the most major brands and most recognizable brands in the world. And it allows us to see a lot of different dynamics. Uh, to tell you one of my favorite things is really the fact that the majority of my managers, my people, um, are, are the most successful people in their families. And I love being in the position to watch this 
to watch people to be in a position to reward people for working hard in their accomplishments. It's the most rewarding thing uh, in my career as we go through there. Because I've really got some truly inspirational people and stories and families in there. A uh, little bit on more of the community side of things. Uh, here in Michigan City, I've been part of the United Way board. Uh, I've been on the boards for the after school programs and mentoring for hours and hours in Safe Harbor. Uh, done a lot with the Salvation Army uh, over the last 14, 16 years. Uh, fundraising, a lot of small things with uh, with Dune Brook and, uh, and everything from Michigan City Police Department. Uh, for the last 21 years, I have been uh, volunteering for Kids in Clays, which is, it supports Ronald McDonald House Charities, if you guys have heard it. And for the last three years, I've actually been chairing uh, the Chicago event, and I'm very proud of that. Maybe we'll even invite some folks out to next year, year's event. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we just raised $262,000 um, for the Ronald McDonald House uh, going through. And it started as an itty-bitty little fundraiser around here. That's great. So that's some of that. And I tell you that because as we go through, it's it's been a lot of good experiences, and I have learned a ton uh, from the other people on the boards that we've gone through there. And while I know in part I'm here to speak and impart wisdom on you guys, I am very excited to learn from you as well. Uh, and that's why I want this to be a conversation. Nothing's free. I expect to learn just as much from you guys as I give to you today. All right. And beyond that, I, uh, I'm married to a to my wonderful wife, Erica. I have a beautiful little almost one-year-old baby boy, and I have the second best beard in the room. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, it's, it's pretty close. I'll give you that. Oh, all right, no, it's, all right. there. it's there. It's there. <laughs> top it's two. Top two. We're top. Uh, there we go. We'll take the top. <laughs> We're good. We're good. <laughs> so talking about that, before I go into I'm, I so if we don't have any questions or anything else for as we're going through here, I'd be happy to go into the tuition programs and tell you some of the things we do in the community. But before I do that, I kind of like to open up to you guys and ask you, you know, Educate me just a little bit about this youth commission and what is it you guys are trying to accomplish that I could be of assistance with or what can my experiences do to kind of support you? Is there anything in there that I can so I can focus it in a way that's best related to you guys and your goals? Well, Mac, well, I'd say I'd say that um, our main goal is to get the youth, kids around our age, to really be more involved within the city because we see it that we don't see enough community involvement. Like, uh, I don't, I don't see many teenagers getting together like this, if ever, in the city and planning, you know, fundraisers and, you know, getting tuition grants or whatever it may be. So, you know, I just want more. We just want more community involvement, not just from us, but from our peers, kids at the high school, kids going into high school, and whatever way we have to do that, we'll do it. Okay. So, so I'm hearing engagement, Absolutely. number one, and then. To, and we're talking about doing fundraisers. Have you guys decided on what you're fundraising for? <laughs> that's kind of so. That's part of the. So I'm skipping ahead on the agenda. So that's uh, part of the agenda, right. <laughs> that's which is okay. which is okay, which is great. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. a part of the mission statement. We're wanting you know our our who, our what, our you know why. Okay. So that's 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 great. That's part of our mission statement. So you can so, get over to. So I am not going to be so bold as to tell you, I won't touch what you should do. That, that's that got to come from you guys because it's got to come with heart. It's got to come with passion. It needs to be your idea. But I will give you guys a little bit of advice as we go through there. The fifth best idea executed well will make a bigger impact than the top three ideas executed halfway. And what I mean by that is when you're looking through this, Please be practical, I, and I'm speaking as we go through there about what type of things you can, if, especially if engagement is your top priority, be practical and make sure you have a clear message that you can convey. Because, and just speaking, I still do this now. It's been a lesson I've learned over and over throughout my career. I get really excited and really passionate about a lot of things, and I want to do them all. Anybody in here like that ever? <laughs> ever? Yeah, and doing that. And a lot of times what will happen is I'll overbook myself. And I will go through there and I will be overcommitted and, uh, or I'll overcommit my resources. I right, plan for a perfect scenario. 
and very rarely do you get a perfect scenario throughout your outcome and you wind, wind up not having the capacity to execute at the level that you want to. And one of the biggest things, especially for a new organization, is quality. So making sure that you have a clear message and a clear goal that you can communicate uh, to, to your fellow peers, to the community, um, to, and knowing your target audience so that when you talk to it, it's a lot like branding. When you go by McDonald's, how many people need to read the word McDonald's on the sign to know what those yellow arches mean? Just got to look once. You look up that you know, I you know how many parents tell me their kids' first word was like nuggies? Like they couldn't even <laughs> say nuggets yet and they go through it's like when you look at branding, I mean when you look at Nike, they don't even put letters on their shoes anymore. It's a swoosh. It's become going through there. So when you're trying to get a message to a lot of people, they are not gonna read a paragraph. Ray Kroc, who started McDonald's, used to have a rule. You were not allowed to send him it, a memo back then, it was before these things existed. Yeah, it was like clickety clackety, there's the whole thing. Ah, uh, you know how the phones are rotary, you don't want to know about that. Uh, but going through the, if it was more than two paragraphs, he'd just throw it in the trash. Wow. He was too busy for that. He goes through there, and in our, so I would say these days he probably would have been diagnosed with ADHD, medicated, and he never would have been successful. <laughs> um, instead, he harnessed it and he had to go through there and just, and not to bring too much love into it, but he harnessed that energy and that enthusiasm, put it through there. But when you have a lot to do, people are busy and as engaged in the people as this room will be, when you get outside of this room, as we were joking before the meeting started, the bold print. Sadly, the bulk of your audience is going to read the bold print, develop an opinion, and, and, and to a large degree, that's going to be it for them. So make sure as you go through there, you manage the narrative of what it is you're trying to do, pick where it is. And especially in the beginning because you can, a success is, is easy to build on. So look at it to look beyond, I like to use the domino analogy. So many people know exactly what's going to happen with that first domino. Do you know what the third domino looks like as they fall into each other? Do you know what the sixth, the eighth, the tenth, the twelfth, how many moves ahead can you look and make a plan? So, and the more successful each step along the way is, the more controlled and the more successful the subsequent dominoes will be. That makes sense. I feel like I'm putting out a lot of taglines here because I don't know exactly what we're going after. Yeah. Um, go, go ahead. Just to add to that, you know, so when, when my mind was working about creating this commission, uh, one of the main things I thought was the youth aren't engaged in uh, official capacity. So. One of the, 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 the main thing that I wanted to do was create a space for them to empower themselves and each other. And then I figured once we created it, they could work out the details and figure out exactly what they want to do. And I tried to be as hands off as possible and not put a lot of mechanism into the ordinance that created uh, the commission to make them be so stringent with rules and kind of give them a little freedom to do. I think, that, I think that's great. I, and I think that's exactly as it should be. So kudos for you guys for having that thought up front. The other advantage that you guys have, I think two or three times, just in the brief time before, as we got to this point, we mentioned social media. As you guys are thinking of your target audience, it's okay not to have all the answers, but we've got the greatest tools in history now through things like SurveyMonkey or social media. Think of the people that you're trying to serve and trying to engage, and you, this is the easiest time in history to include them in the conversation. So when in doubt, with any, anything I've ever been involved in in the public, even way back when we had to do it with a pencil and paper, we, you know, I was always a big fan of some type of survey, some type of communication, and it's really important that you make the decision as you go in from up front to take constructive criticism and a feedback as a gift on the back end. And, it's, and I'm going to warn you now, it's going to be tough to do because you're going to put a ton of time and energy and you know blood sweat and tears into this but it's really important you know in business we talk about is listening to the customer but you've got to listen to your target audience because if you want them to come back that you always have to improve what we did yesterday is great and if we did well uh, great but we need to do better if we did poorly we need to do better if we did great we need to do even greater next time we need to exceed the goal needs to be to exceed the expectations so 
celebrate successes when you get them and when you have an opportunity. Um, it, it's not a personal shot. Make sure we take that as, as constructive feedback and say, okay, it's an opportunity to improve. Sometimes it was challenging. And I'll use the event that ju we just talked about. Very excited. We grew from, I said, we, we raised $262,000. Three years ago when I took it over, it was a big event. It was doing one hundred and fifty-five. We went up with over $100,000 increases in three years. Yet, the first thing we did is send out a survey. We didn't high-five and go through there. We asked the people, we tried to get the biggest sample size possible to say, how can we improve for next year? How can we go through there? And even with 78, 85% approval ratings for things. And we're, you know, a lot of people on the committee will say, oh, it's just one person. But how do we eliminate the opportunity? How do we really impress everybody? And how do we make, and and benchmark for next year. And I want to work, because whenever you're dealing with the public also, you're going to need a little bit of a thick skin. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, <laughs> to quote another McDonald's CEO, Jim Skinner, uh, two CEOs ago, uh, let's see, Easter Park Thompson Skinner, yeah. Uh, it used to be easy for the first like 45 years, there's only three guys running the joint. Now it's like every third year we got a new <laughs> boss. Um, <laughs> He got up in one of our things and he says, uh, a certain percentage of the population is always going to be cave people. Citizens against virtually everything. And so, so we have to understand that. that. So, and I say that too because as you go through there, you guys are going to put a ton of passion into this. I, I have a feeling from looking at the, the folks in this group. Be prepared for those cave people. Be mentally and emotionally prepared for them. Because if you're not, they're going to deter you from the next step and the step after that, and then they win. Do not give them the power over your lives and over your direction to let the cave people drag you down. Take constructive feedback, learn from it, the things you can control, you can control, the things you can't control, do your best to forget about them as quickly as possible. I love that advice. Love that. Yep. And that's what's going to allow you to continue to proceed with passion because if you take these things personally, you're going to get jaded. And, and that is, and, and that is the enemy of passion. It goes through there. And, and so it is really hard to, it's another fun quote that's probably all over memes on Facebook. I promise I do think it's some of these things myself. But it, it's really hard to stop someone who refuses to quit. If, if you refuse to quit and, and, you can, and you insist on putting one foot in front of the other, you will get where you're going to. The question is just when and how long it will take you. Sometimes you'll move fast, sometimes you'll move slow. Okay, but if you refuse to stop, you will get there eventually. All right, so those are, as we're talking about these things, uh, it sounds like the engagement, but think of who you want to go, go through and decide on that direction. And then within your group, one of the biggest things, there is nothing that is not improved by effective communication and accountability. Not accountability is in you're in trouble and I'm going to throw you under the bus if you do this, but accountability, you know, you know, maybe you want to do that, but I don't think you're getting paid for this, so you can't get fired. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but effective communication and accountability as in you do not want to get into the situations where you're duplicating efforts. Because nothing, especially when you're at that 11th hour, a day and a half before your event that you've all put so much time and energy and passion into, and you're tired and you've been up for 16 hours, Everybody's getting on your nerves, and it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, it's going to happen, except that, and don't take it personal when you're the one getting on somebody else's nerve, right. except that, you know, that's all going to go through there. But that accountability, it, it's frustrating when we've got all those hours in, and then we're both working on the same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, now we just both put, I put in an hour and a half, you just put in two hours. One of us just wasted all that time. We could have been doing something else. For the love of God, we could have got a nap. <laughs> you know, it would have been better than both of us doing the same thing. So, really, I, I want to strongly suggest talk about, you know, who's going to own what. And I say own because give them ownership. Allow each other to have that ownership. And it's okay. No two of you will do things the same way as anybody else in there. And so, as you have your responsibilities, you have to allow each other to own that. Um, because otherwise, one person's going to micromanage everything. That person's not going to be happy. Nobody else is going to be happy with that person. And none of you can do as much work as everyone combined can. Even if one of you can outwork two other people, you cannot outwork the nine-person commission. You cannot do that. Okay? So the teamwork is so incredibly 
uh, important. And especially when you manage that well and you respect each other through that process, it will bring you closer together as a team. And the next step, the next domino, will be easier than the first one. And the third one will be easier than the second one. And you will become more and more successful and make it easier and easier. And you'll become a more cohesive team. And it will take less energy to do these things that we're talking about. So, yeah, going off of what he said about, you know, kind of making sure that we stay passionate and not letting us don't get jaded off of like if, if people aren't getting involved right away I know we're still early in this in this process and you know our name isn't completely out there yet I don't I want to keep the passion that we had at the beginning you know we, we got to keep this going through because like you said it's about empowering yourself and not getting don't let someone else's opinion take you down because for me personally in the past I used to take things to heart and now that I'm getting more involved you know uh, with school and this, I'm like you said, I'm going to work on not letting people get to me. You know, yeah. you just got to keep going, and that's I think that's the biggest thing. You can't stop a person who doesn't want to quit. Exactly, and allow yourself to hit a few potholes along the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold yourself to a high standard, but hold yourself to a realistic standard. It's okay to be human. It's okay to be frustrated, and sometimes, most importantly, it's it's okay to apologize when you do. Good leaders are not intimidated to say, I'm sorry. They, they do not take it as a failure that they made a mistake. The good leaders, for the most part, assume that the mistake was theirs. Because even if you made a mistake, had I prepared you better, maybe you wouldn't have. Had I taught you better, maybe you wouldn't have. So always start with the assumption that I made the mistake. Because then when we go through there, nine out of ten times when you go to your team, they're going to tell you you're being too hard on yourself, and that makes it a lot easier for that. And then speaking of team, has anybody ever heard about the four stages of team building? It's one of the most effective things I've ever been taught. And I was not, I'm going to be honest with you, I was not the best student. So I went through that. I was a good test taker. I was terrible. I never did my homework. I was just that there's teachers still at the school that will tell you horror stories. No, I was a good kid. It's a little <laughs> mischievous. Okay, but we go through there. But this is one of the things that in my entire educational and professional experience has stuck with me and it served me well. And it's very simple, but it's something important to learn if you're going to go through it. There's four stages to team building. Okay, the stages are forming, storming, norming, and performing. So let's think about what they look like because as you guys come together, you will go through those stages. And the top, so forming is. To your point, when you guys all got together, this is going to be great. We're going to change the world. We're all so excited. I'm so happy to meet you. Everything's so good. Is this sounding familiar? Oh, yeah. Any team you've ever been on, anything else we've ever done, that's the form. Oh, we're going to kill it. I just know it. Storming is that second phase. That's when you start to get on each other's nerves a little bit. And it's okay. You do it professionally. Do it respectfully. But to some degree, storming is a necessary phase to get through there. But intellectually, when you recognize you're in the storming phase, you can use your intellect rather than your emotions to say, you know what, we've reached this. Most of the time, it's communication and organization that is needed the most in the storming phase because we're duplicating efforts. We're trying, we had some misconceptions when somebody said to do this thing. I took it one way, you took it the other. It's usually made with good intentions. And the more passionate the team, sometimes the more passionate the storming phase. Norming is when you get through that. Most of that stuff's pretty much gone. Everybody has established the roles. We've gotten those misconceptions out of the way. By and large, everybody knows what their role is and they're doing this stuff. The biggest thing about performing is really not just accepting constructive criticism, but actively looking for it and welcoming it. When we go through, and what's that look like? Hey, Nate, yesterday I went through, I did A, B, and C. I don't know how I felt about C. Take a look when you get in there today. Please let me know if I got anything wrong. I'm not upset with you because you gave me feedback. I'm not upset with you because you told me I screwed something up. I'm appreciative that you gave me the feedback so that next time I can do it better. Does that make sense for those stages? Sounds familiar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And I will tell you, half the time our... When I have my staff meetings, I rarely make it through a staff meeting without apologizing to my staff for screwing something up. 
And in part, I'm not that terrible of a boss. I don't screw everything up. But in part, it's also important for me as a leader that they understand that apologizing and accepting, you know, a mistake is not a failure. It's a reality. And it's something that for all of us to be a team and to stay out of that storming phase, we need to do. It's also helpful for me as a leader that my team comes to me and says, hey, boss, I screwed this up yesterday. I'm really so I love that. That is a gift for me. It's very difficult for a leader to have to check up on everybody all the time. It makes me feel successful that my people are comfortable coming to me and saying, hey, I messed this up. You know what I mean? I did these things to fix it. Let me know if you want me to do it different. I don't have to go looking. I can trust that person. I can walk away from that person. And I trust that they're still, at least to the best of their ability, doing their job. And so for you guys, too, that team building, I encourage you to spend some time together. Do not do not be shy with some attaboys or atta girls. High five it. Celebrate successes together, even the little ones. Because a lot of times those smallest things, they're going to mean a lot. Because especially when you only see each other, you guys get together every couple weeks. Twice a month. Twice a month. So when somebody put in 40 hours on something, even though you didn't see it out of the last week, you were through there, try to be aware. Make sure, you know, it means a lot. Anybody ever feel good when they got a new haircut and somebody notices? Feeling fresh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. I can tell they just lined up that beard. And uh, that's why I thought mine was number two. I was excited to be in the running. You know what I mean? It's a great beard. But those, you know, as we go through. That's a beard shame to me. Uh, <laughs> all the kids, well, you know. I don't, I don't worry about it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. Uh, as we go through. So those are some of my little pearls of wisdom. And admittedly, most of them have been stolen from people far more experienced and far, far smarter than I will be. Uh, will ever be. Um, but in all fairness, they probably stole them from somebody else too. Uh, that's how we all learn from each other. Bill, was any of that helpful? I could still go through tuition stuff. I'm happy to. We got a bunch of smart people in here. I'd love to steal them for employees. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you stole me. And, uh, um, so you actually covered our mission statement and our branding. There we go. Yeah. Got a lot on that. Which is good, so um, it's now just for us to formulate and to uh, uh, form, storm, norm, and then perform. There you go. For our mission statement, Randy. There you go. There you go. There you, go. you got so, it down. <laughs> so uh, you, you really went through all that, which is great. Um, so um, if everyone's su su sufficient, if that's sufficient for everyone with that, uh, we'll go on with our... Uh, uh, the tuition ideas because then we can we can all uh, break off and work on our mission statement and go through those four steps um, and then perform it. Yeah. I have something. Gathering from what Mr. Lebesnik said, uh, the social media aspect he said is huge. Back back in the day when he said paper and pencils before the social social media was huge, but now that we're trying to reach you know people our age, that's going to be ginormous. It's the biggest thing. We're on our phones. What do they say? Like. 30% of the day, or I've seen some you know, yeah. stat like that. I don't know, it's huge. I'm on my phone too much. Might as well use it for a good reason. So I think we should really focus on the social media aspect of this. Back when we were younger, it, 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 it'd be five or six of us would have to go to each other's houses, and that's how we got news around. <laughs> we used to have, remember, passing notes. And, uh, yeah. We learned all the different ways to fold them up. Yeah, that was our that was our tweeting. Yes, yeah. <laughs> great. Making a little paper football in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, I didn't put it in airplane mode. Who's oh, race? No, I'm just kidding. Why are you guys are making us feel way too old. So proud. Talking to someone's house. house. <laughs> you had to like leave the house to see your friends. <laughs> you don't like answering doors nowadays. Oh, right. I can literally see them. Like I saw one guy last week. I knocked on the door. He's literally right there eating. Oh, the worst. Literally thing. Saw you had the little sister that would pick up the phone quietly and listen to your conversations. Oh, yes. Yes. These guys will never know that one. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah. 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 There we go. She knows. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. So with that. Um, was everyone okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so one thing I really liked that you said was be practical because a few um, meetings ago, I mentioned something about don't eat the, like how do you eat an elephant and like you don't eat it whole. So I feel like one thing, because during the first few meetings, it seemed like 
we were jumping the gun a little bit too much. And so I do like that he kept mentioning like be practical and like think about something. And one thing that I learned from the um, Lebesnik Art Team Council from one guy, his name was Ish. He uh, mentioned something called SMART goals. Does anyone know what that means? SMART goals? I do, but I don't know if I'm supposed to answer. I know Ishmael. I, I, my um, neighbor. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but okay. there's um, S is specific, M is measurable, A is achievable, R is reachable, and T is time manageable. Time management? So in different places. Yeah, that's that's the gist of it. You know, we go through there. Different places teach it different ways. But yes, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time bound is the way we did it but it's it's a commonly used acronym in different professional circles and it's fantastic yeah we're ready to put you straight into management get through the text to apply she already knows how to fill out the stuff and uh yeah i think you all should go off of that and we should just be practical thank you all right tell us how you really feel <laughs> um so yeah, that's all great stuff. Thank you very much for that. So, uh, to the question, back to the question, was everything? Is everyone okay with that? With the uh, uh, mission statement and branding, having that hosted by Mr. Lesnick here, and then we'll just work on that, um, and then we'll come back onto that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if you can proceed with your other ideas, oh, the uh, well, what we talked about. From uh, the way our conversation originally started was, and, and this is for our organization, we have tuition assistance. And it's one of those things uh, that goes through. If uh, once somebody works for us, just 90 days, and it only takes two days a week on average, it takes a 15 hour week average, they can get $2,500 a year towards school. Now, putting that in perspective, PNW, I think the average uh, tuition is about 4500 a year. So it's, it's almost 60, right around 60% overall college cost and that doesn't expire and that's for working two days a week and if you go into management that goes up to three thousand dollars and then if you're at Ivy Tech although in the business program I have to be more specific because I screwed that up uh, the last <laughs> yeah. time I was making this pitch I gotta figure out how to keep my promises because uh, I thought uh, it's the Ivy Tech if you're in the business program we've also uh, developed internships to where not only will it count as an internship uh, but they will give you college credit. It's too late now. It. And that's something this spot is currently occupied, but it's it's <laughs> roughly a three-month program. It will open up again uh, going through there. But those are some of the different things. And that was the conversation Nathan and I were having that ultimately got me invited here. It's also the shameless plug if anybody's interested, and I'll st stick around to the end of the meeting. Um, but with that, as you guys are talking about young people, some of the things we were talking about is what will, I wanted to encourage you to take a look at what you think will make the greatest impact. And sometimes it's not the flashiest thing. And um, so I will tell you, when I mentioned, uh, when I was introducing myself that I was on the school for the after school care and the mentor during class, it was because at the time I had gone into, it, it was the first time I wasn't running one restaurant. I had a flexible enough schedule that I was finally able to give back in hours to the community in a meaningful way outside of, you know, what my company was doing, you know, volunteering to do things for my company, but I was finally in a position to do that on my own. And when, at the time, I did an assessment in the city and what I thought it needed, and I found out that less than, at that time, less than 100 kids um, made a, PNW was doing a study. I didn't personally figure this all out. Um, but less than 100 kids in the Michigan City Elementary School uh, system made up 92% of the disciplinary visits to the office. Think about that, less than 100 kids. And that was at the same time, the kids they set up with a mentor over the course of a year saw an 87% reduction in disciplinary visits over the course of a year. So at that time, the way I did my assessment is said, uh, if I can reach out to the community and find more mentors, what an impact on the school system would that be? If those less than 100 kids saw an 80% reduction, because you guys have been in school a lot more recently than me, you know, for a teacher with, let's say, 20, sometimes it's 30, sometimes it's whatever students in the class, when one of them is extremely disruptive, what happens to the quality of education for the rest of the kids in the class? It goes right down there. Okay, so if it goes through there, imagine if for those hundred kids we would have been able to get them all a mentor and see an 87% reduction. In my, I'm a math 
guy. That's that's why I do so many of the things. The business, I go, in my head, we should be able to knock that down to like 20% the amount of disciplinary visits for the whole elementary school. That's like 4,000 kids that are going to get better education quickly and teachers that are going to have a better quality of life. At that time, that seemed like a big win. And I will tell you, we went after Pat. It wasn't a lot of things. We didn't do a lot. But... And our whole mission at that time was to get the word out. And over the course of the next 18 months, we went from having 45 mentors in that program to 160 some in 18 months. Now, sadly, because I was breaking a solicitation policy, I couldn't uh, for the corporation that McDonald's was fantastic about, by the way. I, I was not upset with them. They really, they brought in an attorney and tried to say yes to me. But due to some different national franchising guidelines that I wasn't aware of, I was breaking uh, I had to change the format, so it didn't continue that long. But I was really proud of something. That one's not going to be flashy. I will never be able to tell you that this kid did not get in trouble and go to jail because he was in an after-school program at that time. Because like 70% of the at the time uh, of the young kids, they got in trouble with police. It was between the hours of 3 and 6. It was before the parents got home. Right? Makes sense, Right. right. So that was the one-two punch at the time that I saw as impactful. If we can get more of those kids into after-school programs, and if we can get those troubled youth mentors, well, that should get them out of trouble with the police, and statistically speaking, at least, not everybody, not a silver bullet. And we will never know how many kids didn't get in trouble with the police, didn't get a record, you know, actually wound up liking school because somebody paid attention to them. We'll never know that. But I still believe because of that time in there, a lot of kids are better off because of the efforts there. So I'm not pushing you towards that thing, but I'm saying take your own account of things you see in the school, and just by bringing the information to the community, it wasn't me to change this thing. I was just a mouthpiece, and the community came together and made a huge impact. And I think that example for your council to do that, but instead of the, for the community at large, specifically um, young people, Finding something that you feel passionate about as a group and bringing awareness to it and looking at there is most likely multiple people or organizations that do things already that are trying to help with this. Pour gasoline on their fire. Make it bigger. Make it bolder. Bring the community in and bring your passion, bring your energy to these problems that you think can make it. And you will be amazed if you stick with it for a couple of years, the level of impact that you will be able to make, and you guys really are, believe it or not, in a position to make generational impacts to this city if you go through there. And then other than that, I would say also look at, or, oh, yes, sir. No, I was giving me the Oh, okay, I thought you were raising your hand. I'm like, hey, come on in. <laughs> and, uh, but the other thing is don't be afraid to partner with other organizations. There's places like United Way that a lot of times if you partner with them, they can get you matching grants. If people donate through them, it can match. So talk to Chris Pate over there. Talk to some other folks like that. You know, don't and uh, and don't turn away the help and the assistance. You know, don't, don't cut off your nose to spite your face. You know, let them come through there because, again, the stronger your team is, the, the stronger your impact will be. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. a good question. Yes. So, um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just saying. No. So, for this tuition assistance, this would be for current McDonald's employees. This is for McDonald's employees. Okay. They, have to, they have to work for ninety days. And then after that, but just a heads up: if you want to be a doctor, you go to school for ten years. You're gonna get it for ten years. Um, it doesn't. It's not like one of those that goes through, and it's not like a lot of the um, competitor. You know, there's other places that have them in there, but this is. I know this is now the largest one. Uh, a lot of them you have to do a specific school or it only counts towards very specific things. The the other thing to throw in there for the management classes, our management classes are ACA accredited. If you go through 100% of our, so if you go through there, depending on your major, like if you're a restaurant management major in a hospitality program, it probably counts at a higher level than if you're going to school to be an architect, you'll get some electives. So they're not always weighted the same way. But it's up to 48 credit hours through Hamburger University, which is a real university, and it's actually pretty top-notch. Uh, so they go through it. I so, just wanted that information yep. out there for the public that's watching. Yep. And what's the best way to apply for a uh, job at McDonald's? Go in there so we, you could go. The easiest way uh, to communicate is there's a website, the number three, 3gmcd.com, and you can apply online there. There's also a text to apply number, 
which I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, which is 219-312-4441. And if you text the word to apply to that, it'll send you a response uh, almost immediately if you have strong Wi-Fi. And um, if you're in Westville, it'll take a while. Well, it'll take a little while, um, but it'll go through there, and you can fill out your entire application and, and everything from that, and it takes under two minutes. And the same thing as we go forward, that same website has donation requests. So I will tell you guys, as you get together, if anybody would like to do a food run, I would be happy for twice a month, and Nathan will coordinate. I would be happy to, if you want some food and beverages and things like that, we can set up a little package. Uh, for your committee, so you can have some snacks, and I don't know if they're allowed in here, but assuming that uh, assuming it's all enough and up, we'd be happy to take care of you. We're guys. changing Appreciate the narrative. Guys. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing McDonald's in the yeah. big room. Um, okay, uh, and then uh, one more thing. Did you want to quickly talk about the uh, you you and I talked about the give the give back night? You yes. Talk about? You give back night. So as you guys go through here, this give back be nights or something that we. Right away. That, that we do. So whatever you guys are doing, once you have your mission statement and things like that together, uh, I mentioned soliciting before. We can't, it's very difficult for me to do soliciting, but we can do a mutually beneficial business agreement. Uh, going <laughs> through here. And, but what the give back nights are, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with them. We set up a night and a time of day. You guys advertise and you come in and you do some of the hospitality stuff. And basically you drive customers in. It's usually for dinner. Uh, one night during the week on a Tuesday or Wednesday to a specific store, make some flyers, people come in. If they come back for your give back night, I give you the profits from that dinner rush. And uh, so as we get through there, so some of them are hugely successful. Some of them, you know, it, the sky is the limit uh, based on how many people that you drive into the restaurant. And I love doing that. That's similar things that we do with Salvation Army. We do a lot of those with the schools. And it's a lot of fun. And uh, they can also be a very effective uh, way to fundraise and get your message out to the community because it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from, everybody likes cheeseburgers for the <laughs> most part. And the ones that don't, they like nuggets. Uh, so, uh, but we see a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life, travelers, locals, everything else. It's a great way to really uh, see a lot of people quickly and help get your brand and your message out to so the you, trying to. Where's the information for that located? Um, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. You can request it through the donation requested on the same website. Okay. You go in through there, and it's got our contact information. If there's ever any questions, uh, I'll give out my business card. I'm always available by phone. Right. And I can always relay stuff, too. Yep. Um, and so, do you want to state what that thing with the schools is about? The McTeacher's Night. The McTeacher's Night. Yeah. Well, that's the same give that's back same. that I was just talking about. So that's what the McTeacher's Night is just a branded thing because they got so popular with it. Right. But it's the same basic premise. They came through and we just had, over the last couple of years, we've, we've had them. The average one makes a couple hundred dollars when they do that. Critchfield School just went through and they made over $500 on theirs in two hours. It's two awesome. hours. And the biggest thing is my team does the work for you. We clean up, we make the food, we make everything else. It's really the, the bulk that is on the teachers and the organization. They come through and they play a hospitality part. I don't want to take away their earnest on there, but it's really about getting the word out and the advertising, the PR, and driving the bodies and the awareness. But what it winds up being as well is while you're there, the place gets packed. we have got all those people. So what it is you're trying to accomplish, it gives you guys face time with the very people you're trying to reach. It's a great way, and they can come and go as they please. There's plenty of parking, plenty of uh, drinks, plenty of food, and you don't have to provide any of it. So it's a very effective, very inexpensive way to kind of get through there. And that may, if I may be so bold as to make a suggestion, as we're talking about some of your social media, might be a great place to talk about, hey, we're going to try to do something soon. Please fill out our survey. Hey, please be part of our conversation. That's a great way to talk to a couple hundred people in a couple of hours and try to drive them to your service, try to include them in the conversation, because whether or not they get their way, we all feel better about things when we get when we get to have input. So with that, how long does it usually take for uh, the setup of one of these give back nights, or is it just however long out the, the yeah. organization wants to you, plan? And usually, we, need, we usually decide to do it three to four weeks in advance. Um, we can go. 
go faster, but usually, um, usually you want two weeks for advertising. At least. Okay. So the the weight on your end, really up front, is really about getting the word out. So you guys create a flyer, and we share it. That's it. We share it on social media, email blasts. Walk it on down to WEFM. They'll let walk, knock on their door. They'll, they'll let you talk. They'll let you say hi. You know, call them ahead of time or something like that. They'll talk about it for you. It's the same thing. Rick Federici over at WIMS, great guy. You know, they're they're all great. We're really, really blessed with the folks we have in this community. They're huge supporters of stuff like this. And go on down there. They'll put you on the air. They'll, they'll help you get your word out. And so you usually want to start about two weeks out. You start telling people a little bit at a time. And then really... Three to four days ahead of time, that's that's when it hits that you're just telling everybody, you're sharing it every third hour on your social mm -hmm. media accounts, Twitter, everything else, asking other people to share for you. And the day of, you get there half hour, 45 minutes early, you come in and you, you greet people. But again, we make the food, we do all that other stuff, and uh, you guys help everybody have a good time. Great, Great idea. No? All right, thank you very much, yes. Mr. Lebeznik. Anything, uh, any... Questions, comments, complaints from Mr. Lobeznik? Constructive criticisms. Constructive there you go. Absolutely, absolutely right. We can take I that. promise I won't get jaded. Right. Yeah, we can <laughs> if you all get jaded, I will do my best to take it as a gift. So <laughs> Unless you pick up my beard. Oh, my. <laughs> this is actually my first beard, that's why I'm so excited. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. why right. I've had a goatee for years, but I because I was in the restaurants, it used to be against the appearance policy for McDonald's, so I always tried to lead by example. Uh -huh. So I... I wasn't going to tell people they couldn't have it and then walk around with it all day. Right, yeah. So I would always grow it during vacations and shave it before I went back. And, uh, awesome. But when McDonald's changed their policies, I took a little advantage. I would have. And, and now my son loves to go like this with it, so it's probably sticking around. You know, it's probably just going to be like one of those no-shave November things. Right. But I, I'm a sucker for that kid when he started doing <laughs> that. So if he likes playing with it, it's going to stick around for a while. Keep it now. Yeah. yeah. Since um, me and Alexis were um, class presidents, and one thing we were struggling with is like donations because of our senior picnic at the end of the year. And we weren't really sure if McDonald's had a give back night, so we scratched it out. But like we're really glad that you did mention it now. Mm -hmm. So we just call you if we want to send you go to, things. If you go to that website, my wife Erica uh, manages that side of the business. So we have to schedule and we do have limited capacity. So it, it, it's not like I will tell you we're doing something with some Michigan City kindergarten teachers right now as we're going through there, so we can't do it all the time. It's really tough to do between Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. Christmas uh, because of the holidays, so there's just a being practical matter uh, type of thing. But I like to do, for the sixth grade, I like my goal is to do about 12 give backs a year. I like each restaurant to be able to do about two a year because not only is it important to give back to the community, it's also a good business decision for your internal employees. My employees love being part of the community. Most people you'll find are passionate about it. and they So many people don't know how to create that outlet for it. And so just as it's a lot of fun for you guys to interact with the community and to do that for there, on those nights it's such a positive night and my team gets to feel better. So behind the counter we're having a blast and we're getting to get out of that storming into the norming and performing together as well. So it, it's a, it's not only, and so if anybody's watching their business people, it's not only the right thing to do for and a blessing to be in the position to be able to do it, it's a good business decision for you and your teams as well. It, it, it's a team building exercise all at the same time. Yeah, so go ahead, reach out, we're happy to talk. Thank you. All right, so thank you very much for that. That was very good once again. So, um, if there's any, is there any more uh, commission comments? Any more commission comments? No. So, if there's <coughs> being nothing, yeah, like I said, thank you very much, Mr. Babesnik. Yes. I think we will take you up on that whole snack thing for our meeting. All right. <laughs> I think we will. There you go. I really do. And um, with nothing, with there being Just nothing, wait till the apple fritters come out. Oh. The what? The, oh, Y'all know the McRib the, is back, right? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> apple, apple, apple fritters. So I got to try them in advance, and uh, 
They are dangerously good. Oh, here we go. <laughs> they are really, really dangerously good. I don't have an exact launch date. I'm on a lot of teams for McDonald's, so mm-hmm. I get to see things a little bit further ahead. Uh, I don't know so thing, but it's no longer, it's not like, I'm not breaking an NDA or anything like that uh, okay. for it. it it's, I think it's pretty public now that it's coming. <laughs> So, but uh, I don't know if we'll get them before the end of the year or that, but we'll get, it won't be the too distant future. But oh my God, are they, yeah. they going to be a limited time thing or a new menu item? I believe the intention um, is for them to be a new menu item. I don't know if for the first couple months they're going to see how they run or mm-hmm. go through there. Um, truth be told, the only reason I know about it is because I'm friendly with the folks at the bakery. Um, so they haven't told McDonald's people yet, and gotcha. I just, when you're around for a while, you get to know people, and, uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm on the supply chain council, so, but by the amounts that they're ordering, uh, in there, they're going to be around for a little yeah, bit, because gotcha. they're committing to buying a whole bunch of them up front, Ooh, so, uh, great and if you guys buy them, they'll keep them, uh, <laughs> Start an online war like the uh, Chick Fil A and Popeyes or something. Oh yeah, who's <laughs> your fritters are better than Arby's. Oh, we just started it now. No, I don't need to. We're, we're the big guy. Yeah, we, right. They don't punch in our weight class. No, it's, it's, it's we don't want to be we we're don't want to be a bully. Uh, we're the heavy. We're the, yeah, no. All right, folks. There you have it. Apple <laughs> fritters coming to a store near <laughs> you. So, can I get a motion to adjourn our meeting? I make a motion to adjourn. Commissioner Pozos makes a motion to adjourn our meeting. I second that Commissioner motion. Commissioner Galvin seconds. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.